I think we should go to a place called Voděracké Bučiny. It's, it's south uh, of Prague. It's, it's like east of Prague. And it's like uh, there's a lot of oaks. Here we are. Go mushroom hunting. <laughs> we are in the forest, 20 minutes or half an hour outside of Prague somewhere, looking for mushrooms with the creators of the mushroom app. And yeah, hopefully we find some stuff. I think they found some. Yeah? Did you find some? Okay, hi guys, uh, my name is Wojciech and this is Vít. Hi, mm. and we are the creators of the Mushrooms app or Applicace Hobby. In okay, more precisely, we and a bunch of other guys, it's like collaborative. So a lot of friends gathered to make this happen, so. What makes the Mushroom app so special is the advanced recognition software, which allows you to take a photograph of a mushroom and then the app will help you narrow down what type of mushroom it could be, based on where it was picked, coloration when bruised, if it has gills, pores, or teeth, and a range of other factors. Because there weren't any other apps that could do this on the market, their app has been downloaded hundreds of thousands of times. We didn't invest a single buck into the advertisement, so mm. we just live out of word of mouth. Everyone wanted to download it and talk about it, so it was, we were quite actually surprised because we, we, we expected like something like thousands of downloads or something like that. And then we saw all the graphs like going up and we're like, yay, this is. Even though the reception has been wildly successful, the team put in almost a year of unpaid hard work to build the app, with the guys toiling away at night after their day jobs and working the weekend to get it done. Which kind of makes you wonder, where did this crazy idea come from? This idea came to my mind because my grandpa and my father, they are both skin foragers, so they brought me to the forest when I was young a lot. Then in my teenage years, I obviously lost interest in the mushroom because there were so much better things to do. <laughs> but now when, when I got turned like 30, it like slowly started to creeping back to my mind that I should spend more time in the forest. Obviously you have some corporate job and you are doing something for money, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you always find yourself in this job. So that was also my case. So I decided to do also something else that I would do more happily, let's say. Yeah. To have something that I would could be proud of. But mm -hmm. yeah. Did you grow up mushroom hunting too? Uh, well, I I guess I was or I am like the average Czech mushroom hunter. So meaning like I wasn't in a forest every week, but I was going mushroom hunting when I was a kid. And then sometimes even now when I'm a bit like bigger kid, I guess. <laughs> and most of the people in Czech Republic, at least they can distinguish few edible and non-edible mushrooms. So if they go to forest and they see a mushroom, and they might pick it up just like because they know they were mushroom hunting at some point of time. So and generally, I would say you would hardly find a Czech person who's never been foraging for mushroom in its life. That would make me really wonder. Mushroom hunting is a huge part of Czech culture in a national pastime, but it actually started out as a real necessity. Mushrooms are commonly called the meat of the poor because even though they contain less protein than meat, they're filled with powerful antioxidants like selenium, loads of B vitamins, and are even a good source of vitamin D. They've also been found to fight tumor growth, and best of all, when you pick them yourself, they're free. There's really nothing like that feeling of walking through the woods after it's rained and spotting a little group of mushrooms poking out from under the leaves. When, when it's getting rainy and weather like today that we might see later, then you, you in, at least in Czech Republic, you will meet a lot of people in a forest really? picking all the bullets and... and, yeah, and they, yeah. Funny is that they don't talk to each other because they don't want to be disturbed and just like mm -hmm. 
completely it, into their yeah. thing. And it, ju just sometimes there is like, if you met some other mushroom hunters, you can just ask in Czech Rostov, which means if they are growing and it's like the only question and you say, oh shit, then you say yes or no and mm -hmm. that's it and then you go your way. When you are, let's say, walking and you can't see anything because it takes some time to adjust for it. And then you will find one and then suddenly you start seeing them all around because they are usually growing in groups because, as I said, there's this fibrous growing underneath. So you can see them in circles and then start to get thrilling because you just find one, you just uh, bend your knee to just uh, pick it and then you start to see all the others and you have to be, do everything quick because you are afraid that you won't make it. You, you will forget where, where did you see the last the other one. So just are uh, getting confused and um, ta multitasking on, and it's like the thrill of the foraging actually. So before you run out the door and start using this app to identify mushrooms, please remember that even though we use our phones these days to hire complete strangers to drive us from one place to the next, doesn't mean that you can use this app to pick and eat mushrooms without any common sense, without consulting an expert, and without taking the time to slowly learn which mushrooms are actually edible. There's a popular saying among mushroom foragers which goes, all mushrooms are edible, but some you only eat once. <laughs>